Right, well, good afternoon everybody, once again. Welcome back to the plot. Uh, thanks again for all the um, new subscribers. Quite a few come on this week, well chuffed. Uh, I'm going to start down the air again this week, and uh, I'm down home in my little 6x6. Quite a few comments online, as usual. And I'm uh, always welcome to, uh, to answer their questions if um, if I can. Middle of the week on my Facebook page. A lot of lads are complaining about that tomato's curling and twisting at the top and starting to panic about it. Do not panic. Look at these boys. These are twisting away and that's a sure sign that they're growing really healthy. They're getting what they want. Um, if you think you're going a little bit um, under your feed, because my pots, my tomato pots, I make my own pot mix up so I know there's plenty of feed in it. Right up until the flower stage, they've got the trusses on now. There's no tomatoes on yet on these ones. Um, I stand corrected. I've just opened this truss up here, and there's a little tomato there on the back there. I can see them. Lovely. Right. If you just get your flowers on, don't worry about it. If you've just got multi purpose compost in your pots, and what I normally do is I put a little bit, tiny bit of um, seaweed uh, mixture in, in a bottle, and I give them a good spray of that. And that usually saves them over. Just a little foil of feed. Nothing too strong. Once your tomatoes are set, then you start on your feed. Uh, it depends on what you want to feed them with. Tom or right, uh, seaweed fertiliser. There's thousands of different things in the market um, that you can use. Me, I just like to use the basics. I use my nettle tea, I use my comfrey. Um, I use seaweed. Um, all organic stuff. Nothing um, chemicals. So it, it helps with the taste and all. But there. Uh, in answer to your question, yeah, if, they, if their tomatoes are curling, don't panic about it. They're just growing really well, and they're getting exactly what they want. Um, moisture, you're getting the water. Mine aren't sitting in trays, so if need be, I can give a really good soap to them. Uh, bear in mind that mine's really well drained. I've got loads of shops on the main mix, so it's really well drained, but they can drain away, and the, 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 the rest of the water will sit in the bottom of the trays, and the plant can take it up where it wants it. Or kind of operate through the day, which gives it a nice cooling atmosphere through the day. Because when the sun gets up in here, I mean, I've just had the door open, it's 86 in here, and the vents open. Uh, we've got some really heavy cloud. Believe it or not, when I come down 10 minutes ago, there was a hailstorm. Now, we're in the middle of the beginning of June here, and we're getting hail here in the northeast. So that's why I'm never in a hurry to start planting crops out. Um, I just want to show you them, if you remember on the video before, I topped these at 4 to go, and these are my own chilies, and they're absolutely stonkers, they're romping away, lovely strong little plants, they're well broke, they've, they've got three heads on the top there, and of course multi sized shoots come out the side, so we're going to get a great, we're going to get a fantastic crop with them, over the moon with them, great stuff, they're growing really great, tomatoes are growing great, as I say I'll probably, by the time I hit a glass here, Bend them in, I'll probably get three trusses, but I'm happy with that. He's at Alley County, and it's just to fill the greenhouse up down home and to show you how I like to grow my tomatoes. But the peppers are doing fantastic. I've still got a few more to put up the pot, which we'll do this afternoon when we get up there. But the main thing is to talk, start taking a few cuttings off the off the dahlias, and then we're getting the bottom polyton on, and Roger's been plodding away for the last two years, covering a whole bed where we've got our main crop tomatoes with the leaves. Now, you'll have to go right back into November last year when I was collecting the leaves up, and a lot of people say, well, why do you why collect leaves up? Fantastic fair tomato beds, and I'll show you when we get up the plot. But uh, one more thing before we go. Uh, this is for Lisa. She asked about the spray. Well, there's a couple of years asked about the sprays. And you know me, uh, beginning of the year, I love spraying with chamomile tea. It's just got that many different properties in it that uh, gives, you a rare, gives you a bit of edge on there diseases uh, for your compost. But this spray, it'll kill your bugs and it'll feed your plants at the same time. Now what I've got in here, I've got warm water in here, the hot water out of the kettle. And what I've put in here is a, a heat because this is a two litre spray. I'll just treat myself to a new, brand new spray. That's a two litre one, so I'm upping me, me measurements. And what I'm putting in here is a, a heap teaspoon of um, baking soda. A heap teaspoon. I put two teaspoons of good olive oil and then I put my soapy, two good squirts of soap in there. The idea of the soap is because the soap mixes everything together. 
and it, uh, it binds it all together and once, once it's in your spray and you put it under pressure it'll all come out. The olive oil will help to stick to the plant but with the soap being in it what it'll do if you've got white fly, black fly it'll clog the gills up and it'll choke them so it'll kill your bugs but at the same time it'll feed your plants. I'm not finished with this yet one last ingredient and of course don't forget especially for peppers magnesium you must have it and once again I'm doing a heat tablespoon of Epsom salts into that mixture normally on a one litre spray I will just put a little teaspoon of both to your olive oil and your soapy water now oh, that's a fantastic mixer it's well mixed up your soaps in it and your soaps and we'll also find everything is binding it all together and that's what you want it'll all stick if you just put your olive oil in and your your baking soda you'll find it just floats to the top but this way mix in your little bit of soap it binds everything again you see a lovely mixture there so I've got me three quarters full my two litre spray and once again perfect perfect measurement if I can find the top now these are great for spraying peppers peppers do tend to get a lot of black fly and white fly on them all kinds of little beasties like to eat them we like to eat the peppers but so does the beasties but this will kill your beasties and it'll, at the same time it will feed your peppers a foil or spray on your foliage you start to open out if you don't want to feed your plants just yet just spray them with this and of course where we'll go just turn the spray down a little bit or up yeah perfect I always like to give me tomatoes to soak them with this have an evening I'm doing it today because it's black out there and I think we're going to, another, we're going to get another shower by the look of it. But um, I hope I'm not spraying the camera. <laughs> I can give uh, I can give me peppers a really good spray with this and it's uh, absolutely marvellous. I'll take this up the plot. I'll take this spray up with me and I'll do all the peppers and all the chilies up there. I'll just open that there. Just make sure you haven't got any tools either on when you're spraying like to me. But otherwise I'd say one way of getting more rusted up. So I'll just give them a under pressure and give them a really good spraying. That's all the pepper's done. And that's all my tongue's done down here. Really soaking them. Of course take the and that mixture. Just give it a keep. One, two, bit shake around. Fantastic mix here, as I say, it'll kill, it'll kill your bugs, plus it'll also feed the plants, as I say, you want to get your magnesium in your peppers, and that's what's going to do the job. I normally spray my peppers once the fruit comes on, um, I'll only spray this once a week. The seaweed, if you want to spray that, if you've got your flowers on and your, your fruits are coming on, your seaweed you can spray twice a week. Just a little drop in your little watering can, or your, your little spray and just give them a Give the tops a good spray with that, then you'll just see them grow and grow and grow. They'll be twisting, they're getting, they're getting the right amount of moisture, and they're getting the, the right amount of feed. And that's when your plants are looking healthy, and they're growing as good as what these are. Fantastic. So, um, first job out of the way, as I say, I'm, uh, I'm well chuffed. We'll have a few new subscribers coming on. Well, welcome to the plot, everybody. And of course, when you're getting over videos, sometimes I like to start down home. I'm in my little 6x6 six six at home. Um, I start most stuff off down here, especially in the winter. In January, February, I like to put the lights on, I like to put the heat on. Um, it's just a small one bar heater, that's all. I don't like too much heat. At the most, 55 to 60 at mine. Um, I never try to force anything up, just let it grow it nice and natural. And uh, that's where I've always grown my stuff. But uh, for the time being, I'll just. Oh, one more thing before I go up there. I'll just show you these if you remember. Um one about the tomato plants last week. Uh, and anybody losing any cuttings, anybody losing tomatoes, well, take a look at them babies. And they've just been in a week and they're fantastic. Nice rooted little tomato plants. And, and these are just the suckers that I took off the uh, the alicante here. And they're well rooted away. And nice strong little plants. I'm just keeping them under the lid for another couple of days. And then what I'll do, I'll start taking a litter through the day, just let them sit in the greenhouse here in the cool greenhouse with the, with the window open, put the litter on back of the night time for a week, and by then they'll be perfect little plants to put up 
into the little cups or your six or seven inch pots and within four days time they'll be ready to replace any tomatoes that you've lost in your greenhouse and they'll sure catch up because with them being um, side shoots they grow a lot faster than a lot of seeds do and they, they'll romp away, they'll, they'll actually fill your them holes that you've, uh, you've lost any tomatoes in but that, that's when we've grown them, like I say tomato plants are such a versatile plant um, you can either love them or hate them now when I was up, up the plot yesterday, I d done a bit of weed and I started tying some of my cucumbers up and I've got them in big white fish boxes and there was absolutely thousands and thousands of tomatoes coming up through and of course once again I used my own compost straight out the bins don't do any fancy cleaning, steaming, anything, it just goes straight in the pots and uh, and of course with all the uh, last years the soft tomatoes, the rotten tomatoes that go in the compost and uh, nature is fantastic. If the seeds in your, if the seeds in your, your compost, they will grow. Um, and that's why I always say um, earlier on when I start mixing my own compost, and I mix me my homemade compost with the uh, multi-purpose compost in the sharp sand. Best know your weeds from your seeds because uh, I'm going to shut that down because it's getting a little bit chilly. Here. Best know your weeds from your seeds because you will get lots of weeds coming up. So yesterday I went up there and I was tying up the cucumbers and there was loads of what looked like little melons and they probably were because I grew pump pumpkins, I grew melons, uh, or courgettes, aubergines and uh, they are of that family, nice big leaves on them so I've had to pull them all out because uh, as I say all I want there is my cu cucumbers growing but it just goes to show you uh, nature is a wonderful thing we struggle and struggle at the beginning of the year to get good tomato plants growing Give it time, nature will do it all by herself, all in her own time, and that's why I keep saying, don't hurry anything, just wait. Early June yet, there's a guy talking last night on Facebook, we'll plant his early tomatoes out, and I says to him, no, hold on, there's uh, heavy rain forecast and really strong winds. Now, if you're going to put tomato plants out in this wind, you're going, you're going to lose them, no problem, they'll just, they'll just die straight away. Wind burn, or they'll get snapped off, or they'll be cold, and they'll get it the check and it'll take them weeks to pick up again by then you could have had just your plants kept inside against the south facing wall or in a cold greenhouse take them out next week bring them out through the day back in them at night time just for a week and it just gets them a little bit hardened off before you, before you want to transplant outside but just as I say tomorrow's can be fickle treat them right and they'll grow right give them a hard time and they'll punish you for it so as I say, just bear with us. I've only just put my baskets out outside, so I'm hoping they're going to be okay. Uh, they're along, along the sides of the walls. I've got my petunias and my, uh, my safinas in them. So if it does get too bad, I can take the baskets down and just stick them in my garage for the time being. I'll put them on the floor in the greenhouse. I'm not risking losing anything this year. But, uh, yeah, good stuff, right? So I'm going to... got my spray ready. We'll get myself up the plot, and I'll show you the peppers and chilies up there. We'll get some cuttings taken and I'll show you what Roger's been up to on the tomorrow bed. Okay, see you soon. Okay, right, well, welcome back to the plot. A few little bits and pieces we shipped out your way. Otherwise, we'll be falling over them as usual. Uh, I had a put up coming up for half an hour. Lo and behold, we had one hell of a hailstorm just 20 minutes ago. The sun's back out now shining. It is absolutely chronic up here in the northeast. And really quite a large hailstone. So anybody that's got um, summer bedding and uh, frost tender ones, I think they would have lost them this afternoon. Because the wind's picking up there now and the wind, even the wind's cold. So I'm going to get up, get cracking on these few little jobs I've got to do. And then I'm going to carry on up in the cucumber patch, which I'll probably start on next week, up the, the far end of the greenhouse. We have been there uh, tying up the cucumbers and making some frames for them to grow. Dave Shaw mentioned it last night on my Facebook page. Uh, crystal lemon. And now I love crystal lemon. I grow them every year. It's such an easy cucumber to grow. If you find problems growing cucumbers, I grow about three, four varieties. Um, this one here, well you can see the cucumbers on there, I'm going to take a couple of these off tomorrow, me and Roger will have one for what take, there's three absolute beauties on there. Uh, these are Socrates, and they're just at the right size there now, perfect for, uh, for taking off in there, 
I'm going to train, put another key in here, tie the key into there, and then it's got its very own web where it can just climb along right on the top. It'll not hit the tomorrows uh, because in here there's only four foot headroom. So once again, I'll get one, two, I'll get three trusses, the key will come along the top, and I'm quite happy with that. But what I want to do today was to get up and once again, there's a the spray. Now, cucumbers can be a pain in the backside for mildew, but believe you me, if you use this spray, it'll, uh, it'll give you quite a bit of protection. Just uh, make sure you're well soaking the leaves. Give it a good spray. There's loads of little cucumbers on there, but um, really good spray. I've got peppers and chilies over the back. I want to give them a spray. I'll work my way along. I don't does it matter if the tomatoes are getting soaking? As I say, it's a, it's a fantastic feed this for everything. But what I like to make sure is the peppers get a real good soaking, especially the tops. And these ones here, right, I'm over the moon with them. Um, they're breaking really nice. I stopped these about two weeks ago. They're a little bit dry tonight, so I'm going to give them a really good watering. But I stopped these about two weeks ago, and already they broke away into three sections. Now, that's fantastic because they're not, not going to get no higher than these stakes and what they'll do is give us a, a nice crop of peppers. Um, another little job I want to do the night as you see I've got three or four jobs on the go the night. Yeah, once I get all these chilies done I'll take it into the pepper house and I'll show you in there and we'll take a couple of cuttings Get them another so along here along this end I've got a, a diva. I'll just turn the uh, I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you the diva. Um that's them um, in the corner there, absolute uh, first class cues, some of them all that great stuff. I say they're growing really well. Let's say uh, all it needs now is a, a little tire in there. I've got strings along here and I'll put a cane, I'll wind a cane in between them uh, and then tie the cane in and then the whole lot's gonna got a frame to climb up one, but that's great, that's, that's, if you just wrap it around your, wrap it around your cane, and wrap it around your strings, you should find that it's, it really grips well. Water tanks are always filled at the top, Roger, make sure he does that first thing in the morning, of course he comes up at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, so there's nobody here, um, so he makes sure all the water tanks are well filled up for me, that means when I come up in the evening, I've got the, uh, I've got about 10 water tanks throughout the garden that I can choose from. But they're absolutely amazing. But uh, of them, with them, tomatoes are growing really well. I have the uh, second trusses on there. Now these are the Thompson Morgan ones. There's only four of them. One, two, three. Yeah, there's four Thompson Morgans that I've tried for the first time this year. Now they're the beefsteak ones. And they're, they're growing, smashing. Nice and strong. And of course, once again, they're nice and curly. Curling on the top here. Plenty of leaf growth. They're curling up. And that stem there, it's a beauty, it's really solid. And what I like to try and do is try and pull the stems through as they grow without snapping them and pull them against the cane. So that what they're doing, they're twisting the stuff around the cane and uh, it, uh, it saves putting tyres on them. But once I hit this middle cord, I'll wrap it the other way and then to the top here, by then I should get three trusses off there. Fantastic, they're growing really great. Here's with them, and like I say, all I need. Good spraying of yeah, that juice. And then we'll get myself away into the. It's the melon house, but this year it's become the pepper house. We grew melons in it last year, and uh, I've decided to put the melons. I've decided to put the melons in the main bed with the um, with the sweet corn this year. So uh, rather than let the melon house go to waste, I've filled it with peppers. But we'll, uh, we'll pop in here and we'll get cracking and give the peppers a good soak and we'll give the um, we'll take some cuttings of the dahlias, okay? Right, well, here we are. Welcome to the Mellon House. And of course, this year it's been taken over by the peppers. But I don't mind that, I don't mind what I get in as long as I can fill them up. There we are, there's the ones we stopped. I think it was only in last week's video, or the video before. Stopping. And it makes such a difference. They're a nice, 
a lovely small squat plant now. Absolutely marvellous. I like to leave about four, six leaves before I stop them. But already they're branching out and there's flowers on there now. So the seed shoots will come out and they'll carry all that more, all that much more fruit. And all I've got them in is uh, nine inch pots and of course once again my old favourite, the drip tray. Uh, they just hold meat trays or vegetable trays. Use anything you want as long as they hold the water. Really good free draining compost, once again for the peppers, same as my tomatoes. I can get these a damn good soaking and the water will just run out, excess water will run out and it will sit in the bottom of the tray and these, if they get dried through the day they can take that excess water up. Once again keeping the moisture nice and cool and uh, nice and fresh and that's where I like to grow them. First class crop of peppers coming up from them. All you need to do is go along and get a bit weeding done because once again it's my own compost, my own mix. Check on some of my last videos and I'll tell you how to how I make my mix up and I use it for everything right across the board uh, for putting on. But unfortunately that's the only drawback is you'll get weeds. If, they, if you don't mind going along and weeding them out every other night, uh, that's a bonus. For one for a plant like that, absolutely fantastic. Really strong, good looking, dark green. Got a mark on it, nice and clean, and that's where they should be. And even when they're in this stage, still doesn't stop us from going along <laughs> and giving them a giving them a blast. Now the sun's started to come up, but I'm not really worried because uh, it's not um, it's not too strong. So I'm gonna make sure I give these, especially in the tops where I nip them out and the, the new buds are starting to the new growth starting to grow out there, there's two, three, four shoots on that one and that's where I like to get into with a spray if there is any pests lurking in amongst them well, they're going to get a shock there again, tomato plants growing out of them if, uh, if you don't mind a few weeds and then, and of course you always get the, the nettles come up and of course the nettles are off the horse manure but uh, I never mind that a good spray. That's an absolutely beauty that one at the back there. First class that one. I'll just bring it down so we can see it. It's getting a really good soaking but uh, it's a fantastic plant that. Nearly as thick as my thumb. Really, really strong growing. But there, uh, I'm moving them over with them. Great stuff. Of course the chilies on the back here. The chilies are growing just as well. A little bit tall for this polythene, I'm going to have to tie some of this polythene back. Uh, but I've stopped all the chilies. There we have it. Really good soaking. So any black fly, green fly, white fly, blue fly, whatever you want, if you want to come and invade my plants, you're going to get a shock. Right, okay. Mark a show. Stuart Mark a show. Hiya. I've got a couple of my old perennial favourites again. The little plug, plug plants, the little um, jiffy pots. And these are fantastic for taking cuttings. I talked about the dahlias a few weeks ago. A lot of people don't like collecting the dahlias because of the size of them. They, and they haven't got the room to store them over the winter. The likes of this one, especially. Yeah, this is Mori Gold, and you can get tubers a foot to 8 inches wide. Absolutely monsters if you grow them the way we do in horse manure. Pile up, you can get absolutely monster um, tubers. But that's the tuber there, and that's the one I grew at the beginning of the year. It should have been planted out by now, but uh, main road has been really busy. We haven't been bothered about the flowers. So if we, if we just ease that pot off, you'll find that it's a solid root ball. And that's, that's fantastic because the tuber is actually sitting on top of the soil. Now it's a bit compact there now, but once I take these cuttings, I'll just stick that in the garden outside and it'll grow away. Easy as pie. And I'll get a couple of nice blooms of it. But there, for the cuttings, well, nothing can be easier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slip that one just below the leaf node there. This cutting here, I'm going to take that top cutting off just below that leaf node there. 
leave these two on and then what will happen between these two bottom shoots you'll get new growth coming away from there so you'll get a bigger bush in the flower and this top one here I'm going to stop it just below them leaves there leave them two leaves once again they'll break away so you'll get a you'll get a nice flower coming off and I'll just there I'm going to cut that from there just below the leaf dude on a slant on a 45 degree angle take that off same there I'm going to cut that one there just under them two leaves on a 45 degree angle about a quarter of an inch just below there cut that off there's our two cuttings now that'll romp away now that'll, from the axles you'll get new shoots coming out of there and you'll still get a first pass plant out of that I've got a couple like that and I tend to use these for pot tubers it's the easiest thing in the world to take them uh, all you want to do now is concentrate on these lower leaves uh, that's the top one I took I'm just going to cut that one away there cut that one away cut that one there and cut that one there and you end up with that just that three little leaves once again the smaller of the cuttings I took just going to cut that there you can use a knife a nice sharp knife just cut down the side of the the side of the stem where the leaves are and I'll cut them two away and all and that one there just use a nice sharp knife with the uh, there's your node there, that's your node, that's where we'll cut the leaves off and I cut it at a 45 degree angle away from the node so it's just a nice uh, edged cut as I say, nice little standing knife pair shops does, does the job perfect and once again, I've got my little peat blocks a little hole in it, just stick it in water's dripping out of them, lovely and, lovely and moist and of course, whatever your preference is, if you want to use honey Use rooting powder, use a gel, whatever you want, and just dip them in. That's the little rooting powder that's left lying around there. I'll put the hole in the, in the centre, I'm going to push it well in as far as I can, and then tighten around the top. Just make sure that compost, as I say, if you're going to use these blocks, just make sure they don't dry out on you. And what I like to do, I keep them in a little tray like that, there's a little bit of water in there and just in a little, just a little meat tray I get from the butchers, mince or whatever a little bit of water in the bottom, just let them sit in there, doesn't do them any harm and there we have it, there's your first cut in there well what I'll do with these I'll take them back into the shed back into the, into the greenhouse here and I'll put them once again just make a little just make a little hole where it says just so you can push that root ball right in there into the compost fantastic and just pack around the top you see the water dripping out it's nice and moist and there we have it that's your first two cuttings nothing can be easier than that it's so satisfying when you can take your own cuttings and of course plants for free and that's what it's all about and you can do it with most plants if you want to take cuttings, just make sure you cut below a node, make sure you cut on a slant, uh, a nice angle, so that means any water's running off it. And then, pack them into your preferred, you can use little pots. If you're using a little pot like that, um, if I'm taking a lot of cuttings, like six or that, I'll use a little 7cm pot like that, or a 9cm pot. But I'll use my own mix, once again, multi-purpose compost, and I'll look half and half of sharp sand with that with that mixture and that really free draining so you put your plants around the edge of the pot you'll probably get five in there four on the edge one in the middle and then what I'll do with them I'll get a plastic container which you should have under here yep one of me one of me lids in a tray than the one I want. Always the struggle. Just through there. One of these days I'll get round to tidying up the shelves under here. So we'll be sorted. There we have it. Just an ordinary plastic tray. And top of your lid. 
you use a little stock in that tray with the water in and then it'll go and sit under here. Now what you want to do, I'll give them a I'll give them a good spray. Um you want to take quite a few so you can, you can have them standing upright or what you can do um, if you've got smaller trays like that if you've got smaller trays of sixes and eights which I have I've got some up the top greenhouse I'll probably use them because what you can do you can just stand your cuttings in there I think that I've got some sixes or some eights up the top of the shed and I'll get a couple of them out I will be taking some more cuttings later on but it'll stand in there perfect if you get me mean they'll stand in there and they'll go the little ones will go inside this tray, plastic on top of them, Bob's your uncle. All you need to do is make sure you give them a good spraying every day. I've always got my spray bottle handy. Uh, keep them out with direct sunlight. I'll sort them out in a minute. You can uh, pop them under the bench. They'll probably, they might stop in here actually because uh, I can leave them down there, I'll just push this tree along a little bit to make some room and they'll just stop on there and of course it, the polythene up the height it's stopping the direct sunlight going through and all I have to do is come along with a spray bottle and give them a little spray every day and I'll keep it nice and moist and within a couple of weeks you'll have a first class young dahlia to pot up into a rare just a 9 centimetre pot that's all no bigger than that and what you'll end up with is a first class Hot tuber for next year, but I'll show you all that in future videos as we make our way along. But for these fellas, they're going to be piled out in the garden tomorrow and planted up. And that one's Hamari Gold, that's an absolute stunning one. Beautiful, decorative gold dahlia, fantastic, really nice big blooms up there. I'll pop that one outside tomorrow. I've got another one over in the shed to take some cuttings off. We'll get them finished off later and then there. Uh, We'll just pop in the bottom tunnel and see where I've just been through, okay? Right, well, I'm surprised we don't see anything in here. It's like an absolute jungle. And of course, um, uh, my regular viewers will know, here's the mother plant, my mother grapevine. This is uh, now four year old, five year old. And it's, uh, it's absolutely romping away. I've got a load of work to do on that. I don't really bother cutting this one back until mid-June, as you can see the, the bunches of grapes on there, there's absolutely tons of them, so I'll, I'll work my way along, and uh, I'll probably do, add this to the next video, um, because uh, there's absolutely tons of bunches of grapes on there, and we'll uh, we'll just weed them out, we'll take the best bunch every foot, and of course all these side shoots will come out, we'll just work my way along, and uh, we'll get them, we'll get them cropped as best we can. Our oh, strawberries in the basket, well, once again, they've been absolutely beauteous from there. I'm not there, I'm not over impressed with these because these are the, um, um, these are the Albion. But what they are doing, they're throwing out plenty of runners. So what I'll do is I'll take all the runners off them and I'll grow them the way I like to grow my strawberries and hopefully we'll get a much better crop next year. Um, just down at the bottom, I want to point down there and I'll show you what Roger's been up to. Um, what we did have up here, up till up till Wednesday, was 20 bags of um, the leaf mold. Uh, as I say, you have to go back. You have to go back to November last year in the videos, and it's uh, the leaf, the, the tree harvest. And of course, this is what we do, and they're absolutely beautiful. Smell gorgeous, and that the whole bed has been done. It's taken him two days to do, two months, but he's absolutely covered the whole bed. What I like to do with the, the tomatoes is to go through them, and take all the bottom, most of the bottom branches off them. You might sometimes find an odd truss really low down, but I'll just cut it off um, until I get a, a truss a little bit higher up, which is that one there. Yeah, the first truss is on there. As I say, I'm not really worried about these because these are the main cup tomatoes. Um, we're never in any hurry for you. There's small tomatoes on there, a uh, few little ones. There's some nice ones over there, a nice bunch of tomatoes over there, but I'm never in a hurry for these ones. That's why I don't like forcing them. Uh, there's three different varieties in here. There's the, um, there's the large Spanish, um, 
is a cherry Spanish and there's some uh, money maker over the back end there. But uh, and I think there's a few large orange down the bottom end. But uh, once they come through, we'll, we'll see what's what. But as I say, that's the um, that's the main job is uh, of getting the uh, collecting all the leaf mold. And it's been sitting there for well, it's six months in the bags. And if you can collect it when it's been raining, when it's wet, just tie it up in black bags, nice heavy black bags, tie it up, hide in the corner of the garden, and leave, forget about it until now. And of course, what this does, got the um, the main benefits for this is I've got the weepy hoses under here and I've just turned them on as I come in. The weepy hoses are underneath. We'll, we'll put a good coating of leaves on the top of them. Now, it not only improves the soil, but what it does is it keeps the roots, the tomatoes, nice and cool. It stops any weeds growing through, so you, you have less weeding to do. And it keeps your water retention, your water's underneath. You don't have as much evaporation because the sun's not hitting the soil. Hitting the leaves and the leaves are keeping, as I say, they're keeping the roots nice and cool. So it's got three really great benefits. And of course, at the end of the year, when the tomatoes come out, um, what we normally do with these, we'll follow this bed will be followed with potatoes. Potatoes are in there this year, they'll be in here next year. So when the tomatoes come out in November, when they're finished, they'll be turned over, they'll be mucked, they'll not have any lime put in it, they'll just have a good mucking, and we've got a big black sheet that will cover the whole bed with. And that'll stop on until middle of January when we'll put our, our first early titties in. And uh, that's the way we like to work our beds out. But uh, I think he's done a cracking job here. I'm, uh, I'm quite surprised I come up the night. I think I was going to have to put a few more bags of leaves out, but it's all done. And of course, he's filled all the water tanks. He's been put, putting pot leaks outside. So what we might do next week on the video, I'll give you a little show in the garden and show exactly what we're getting planted out. But uh, I'm well impressed. Uh, a month ago, six weeks ago, I was really panicking. I thought we weren't going to get anywhere near. And of course, we're having the lockdown, but the wife not being too grand, too twitch, she's on the way up now. She's made a quite a good recovery. She's still tired, but um, it means I can get up at the plot a little bit later in the evening. Um, I'll come up for an hour now, an hour and a half, um, and get uh, get as much as I can done in that hour and a half. Be quite surprised when there's nobody here, there's nobody chatting to stop you or. Um, putting you off, you just come in, lock the gate and get stuck in for a good hour, good hour and a half and you can get loads done. But uh, we're well ahead, the only job I've got left to do in the big greenhouse is to put the last of our peppers and the last of our chilies out. But uh, they're sitting in there in 12 centimetre pots so I'm, I'm quite happy with them. I'll probably catch up with them next week um, in the next video, get them all planted up and uh, that, that'll be the whole, all the greenhouses, all the tunnels. Um, I've only got courgettes to plant out in there, in the big green, the big tunnel. We'll be digging titties up tomorrow, so that'll be another patch come empty. And what I'll do, I've got six courgettes there, shooting star. They'll just trail along the ground, and that'll fill that patch up. And I've still got some more crystal apple cucumbers uh, to pop in. But um, yeah, it's all good at the moment. I'm uh, I'm well pleased. So, I've given you a few tips again. I'll give you a couple of sprays. Just thanks for all the comments once again down below. Um, catch you on my Facebook page if you want to get it, um, get on chat with me if it's an evening. If you can't wait for the videos, we'll try to get a video out every week. But uh, some weeks it gets, uh, gets a little bit hectic and we'll get might get put back a day or two. But um, yeah, on the whole, we're just about there now. We've got a bit more planting out to do outside, but uh, we should be okay. And then it's just there. Uh, it's just tending the plants from now on. We've had a couple of good showers, a couple of good rains over the last couple of days, so the ground's nice and excuse me, the ground's nice and moist. So I haven't got that to worry about tonight. You know, I've just concentrated on the plants and said I'm gonna water my croissants now. In fact I'm gonna stir the nettle barrel and I'm gonna give them another drink of that tonight. I say it was last week when they had the last drink. And if they get one of them every week, I'm well chuffed. Might even cheat into a little bit of seaweed feed and uh, see how they respond to that. But apart from that, once again, thanks everybody for your comments. Um, I'll see you all again. Um, okay, watch what you're doing and enjoy yourselves on the plot.